Hey, what is up guys? Today we're going to be taking a look at all the rods and reels you might need to catch big rockfish and link cod. Now in a previous video I covered all of my favorite lures from shrimp fly rigs to big massive swim baits. Everything is covered in that previous video. This is the follow-up. I'm going to cover everything else that you might need to catch big fish. Now let's take a look first at the actual fishing reels. Now fishing reels for rockfish really only come in two categories. You have your bait casters or conventional and you have your spinning reels. Now if you're just starting out, a spinning reel is probably the one you're most familiar with. Um, but in my opinion, it's not the best fishing reel for targeting big rockfish and link cod. Now when you're targeting these fish, typically you're from a vessel, either a charter boat or your own little kayak or small boat. And uh, you'll be tempted to want to use a spinning reel if you're not familiar with bait casters because one, one, they're they're fairly simple and two you probably are going to want to try to use the gear that you already have now the downside of spinning reels is the fact that you have a bail to operate you have to open and close it every time you want to send your presentation down to the bottom and two and most importantly you're putting a lot of undue pressure on the line as the line is being wrapped around the spool by the rotor, it's going around this line roller. And every time it does, you're adding an additional kind of choke point. So it is a little harder to pull up a rockfish and your presentations uh, from the bottom with the spinning reel. And two, every time you make a revolution, you introduce a line twist into your reel. With braid, it doesn't matter so much, but if you happen to be using fluoro or mono, you're gonna get a lot of line twists. And at the end of the day, you're gonna have a lot of presentations that are just corkscrewing down to the bottom. And it's something that you might not want because you can end up with a lot of tangles uh, later on. So I've kind of progressed to simply going to all bait casters for almost all of my uh, rockfish and lincoln setups. Again, the benefit of the bait casters, number one, is that they're smaller. Uh, you have a smaller profile. And uh, most importantly, as you turn the handle, you're applying a uh, direct torque to the line. There's no rotor to uh, intercept the line. There's no line roller to rob the torque that you're applying to the line. So using a bait caster really is the only way to go. And plus, as I'll show you, a bait caster sits on top of the rod. And so you don't have to worry about your eyes and, and guides uh, on the rod getting banged up by the side of the boat, the boat rail, or the side of your kayak. Bait casters are just the easiest way to go. And two, if you are jigging uh, like I like to do, if you're taking baits and bouncing them off at the bottom and you want instant line release and instant recovery there's nothing like a good bait caster with a big thumb bar like this one this is a shimano trinx a 500 pretty big for ling cod kind of oversized uh, more than you need you can get away with a 300 a 400 seems to be the most popular size but having a bait caster with a thumb bar allows for easy release easy recovery and just a lot more management and control as you're sending your presentations and bouncing them off the bottom of the water. Now, as far as fishing line, I know a lot of old school guys still like to use mono, but preferably uh, in, in my case, I really like braid, specifically J braid multicolor. And the reason why you wanna use braid, unlike monos, is that braid has zero stretch. When you're sending your presentations down, you know, 100, 200, sometimes 240 feet or more, there's a lot of opportunity to yo-yo your lures if you're using mono. And if you do have those little subtle bites from smaller rockfish, you're not gonna really feel them. It's gonna take a lot to load the line before you notice that there's actually a fish biting or a fish on. Now with braid, because it has zero stretch, it really telegraphs every little bump that you're feeling on the bottom, whether it be a nibble from a fish or your lure bouncing up and down off the bottom, which is where you wanna put your lures uh, depending on the presentation. So now that we've covered the basics of reels and line, let's finally talk about rods. Now, when it comes to targeting rockfish and lingcod, you really don't need to go fancy. It all comes down to getting your presentation to the bottom of deep water, hooking that fish and bringing them to the boat and doing it repeatedly over the course of a day. Now, rock fishing can be tiring, so it really comes down to what makes it comfortable for you. Now, I have a lot of rods here in the six to eight foot range. And as I go through all of them, maybe it'll help you define and determine your style of fishing and what works best for you. And first up, let's take a look at what I consider the small vessel rods. So the rods that you wanna bring in uh, your kayak, your small boat, or a small skiff. Now these rods can really be just large, heavy action bass rods, large mouth bass rods. And the reason why you can afford to go light action is because if you're in a small vessel, you're probably relatively close to shore, which means you're not gonna be in super deep water, at most maybe 100 feet, but in actuality, you know, 50, 60 feet at most. And the nice thing about 
rock fishing is you can use a rod that you already have. This is a Daiwa uh, bass rod. It's about uh, seven foot, medium heavy, something like that. Perfect for throwing smaller uh, presentations to the bottom. And the nice thing about this light gear, it's almost like going ultra light for rockfish. Super sensitive, super light. You can really bounce a smaller, you know, one to two ounce presentation all day. And if you hook something, hold on, cause it's gonna be a fight. Uh, if you wanna go a little heavier, I definitely recommend a seven foot extra heavy style uh, bait casting rod. This is an Akuma Shadow Stalker with a uh, Akuma Komodo SS bait caster reel. Now this rod is just awesome for the kayak. In fact, this is my go-to kayak rock fishing and link cod setup. The nice thing about it is because it's a bass first rod, because it's a punching rod, it's relatively light. It has a great kind of medium length butt end. You don't really want a super long butt end when it comes to rock fishing. And uh, it's got a really sensitive tip. So not only can I bounce little presentations off the bottom and feel every little nibble, once I set that hook and I get that rockfish off his structure, I have the backbone to lift him up. The action on this rod is pretty pretty perfect for rock fishing. I really dig it. And the nice thing about a bait caster, especially the uh, a Komodo SS series, is it has a line clicker. Yeah, most line clickers are reserved for your know, traditional conventional reels, your round reels, but a nice low profile reel like this with a line clicker, check this out. Oh, just perfect if you wanna go live bait or send something down, put it in the rod holder, Turn the clicker on and have a sandwich and wait for the bite to come to you. Just an awesome, awesome setup. And rounding out the small vessel rods, I really like my St. Croix Mojo 7 foot medium rod. Now this is a spinning rod. Again, I didn't really say that I really favor spinning reels when it comes to rock fishing. Uh, this is a 2500 pen conflict. But the nice thing about spinning reels is that if it's a really windy day and you have super light presentations that you want to send out, or if there are rockfish near the surface, or if you see any other fish other than a rockfish, you know, at the surface of the water, having a rod like this is great, especially if you have schooling bait fish around. So a nice uh, small spinning reel, a lot easier to cast smaller presentations, and uh, it's a great option to have. And you know, if you are in water where there are a lot of schooling bait fish, you're gonna wanna throw a sabiki rig on a rod and maybe make it your permanent sabiki setup. So having a uh, nice little spinning outfit with a good backbone, definitely, definitely something you wanna have. So now that we've looked at the smaller vessel setups, it's time to look at the big boy stuff. It's time to look at the setups you'll be bringing in those deep water party charter boats. Yeah, sure, you can bring these smaller light action rods and reels with you, but the reality is you're gonna be targeting bigger fish in much deeper water. And this light action stuff is just not gonna cut it. Yeah, you can hook the same fish, but you're gonna be losing a lot of time and a lot of energy reeling and fighting those fish instead of allowing the heavier action rods and reels to do the work for you. So to start it off, if you're new to deep water jigging, you're probably not gonna to wanna to bring your stuff or you might not have any gear. It's okay, there's a good chance that the charter boat that you're going with rents gear. Normally it's about 20 bucks per day, not including the cost of the shrimp fly rigs and the uh, ball weights that you're gonna be using to get those shrimp flies to the bottom. And the captain's gonna set you up with something like this, a very simple conventional round reel with a seven to eight foot medium heavy to heavy action rod. Now 20, 30 pound mono is normally what the captain's gonna put on. Super simple fishing, you're just gonna tip your shrimp flies with squid, put a one to two ounce ball weight, depending on what the captain's saying, on the end of your setup. And uh, when the captain says release, release that line and send it all the way down. As soon as it hits the bottom, tighten your reel and crank up, depending on how many times the captain says, and the captain's gonna be paying attention to how many uh, you know, rockfish are below the boat and the distance they are from the bottom. And uh, all you gotta do is get those shrimp flies in front of those rockfish and they're gonna bite. Now, if you wanna have a more sporting chance and target bigger rockfish, you really wanna get into lures. And again, part one of this series covers all the lures that you might need for that. And uh, we're finally gonna talk about the rods and reels that complement those lures. So if you're gonna to wanna to start using lures to target rockfish and lingcod, 
you're gonna to wanna to start with a reel. Now, in my opinion and in my experience, you're gonna want a large saltwater rated bait caster. The nice thing about these newer bait casters is that they have the line capacity of a fairly small round reel, but with the thumb bar action of a bass bait caster. The nice thing about a thumb bar, again, is that it allows you to consistently release the line, reel it up, release the line, reel it up as you're bouncing that presentation along the structure or reef or the fish are holding. It's much easier, in my opinion, to control the release and bounce and contact with that structure at the bottom with a thumb bar versus a drag on the side or a lever on the side of the reel. Now, these bait casters are becoming more and more prevalent today. And really where you wanna start, in my opinion, is with a Daiwa Lexa 300. These are awesome, smooth, consistently reliable reels. This one is a Daiwa Lexa Win with the uh, power handle. Super, super grippy, fairly light, enough capacity to fish 240 feet all day snag deep, breaks them off, and you have more than enough line to keep your day going. And as we step up from the shorter speed jigging rods, we get into my favorite class of rods. This is the Shimano Travala range. Anywhere from six to seven foot, the Travala range has got you covered. And specifically, I'm talking about the TVC 66MH. Yeah, I know that model number by heart because I love this rod so much and I've recommended it to so many people. This is the Shimano Travala TV casting model C. 6'6", six, 6'6", six, six six, MH, medium heavy action. Uh, the reason why I like this so much is because of all the rods I have here. It's the most versatile and it's one of the most light and it's one of the most, it's probably the most powerful rod actually. Um, it's meant for these Shimano butterfly style jigs in that you send the presentation of the lure down to the bottom. This is a 5.6 ounce one. You send it to the bottom, when it hits the bottom, you reel up, bounce it, and let it have a controlled descent. And the combination of the action of the rod and that lure, if done correctly, allows that lure to flutter down like a butterfly, catching a lot of light, perfectly imitating a dying bait fish. Now, these Travala rods are insanely light for what they are. And with a uh, cheap bait caster like this one on top, this is a 200 size bait caster, really does a great job of introducing a lot of power, efficiency, and comfort while you're rock fishing and lean cod jigging. Now the Travala range does come in a spinning model. This is the TVS 66MH, and I've got my uh, Shimano Sphero 6000 SW on it. Also super light, um, you know, does basically the same thing the casting version does, just in my opinion. It does it a little more cumbersomely, if that's a word, uh, because you have your lines and the guides facing downward. Uh, you know, there's a good chance you can bump all of this on the side of the boat or on a rail. Um, um, and uh, in my opinion, spinning reels just aren't nearly as efficient when it comes to working heavy fish in deep water as a bait caster. But if you have to go spinning, because that's what you're comfortable with, you know, the Travala has got you covered. And uh, the nice thing about this Feros is that it is a basic sealed reel. So if you put your rod in a rod holder, and specifically in smaller craft, like a little boat or a, a kayak, you're gonna get sprayed all day and a nice spinning reel with internal sealing like the Spheros is really the bare minimum you wanna use if you're targeting rockfish and lingcod in big open water uh, with a small setup like this. Now stepping up from the Travala range, if you want something with even more utility outside of just bottom jigging, you're gonna take a look at something at least eight foot long with 20 to 50 pound line capacity, medium action, and the Shimano Terramar is a great fit. Now the Shimano Terramar line is basically Shimano's answer to the very popular Phoenix Abyss 806 to 808, 809 series. And uh, this, this rod in combo with a 400 size Akuma Komodo SS is just a great all around uh, all purpose, you know, NorCal, SoCal uh, fishing setup. Uh, the reason why I have this rod is that it's a great swim bait rod. Because it's longer than the Travala, you really get a lot of action on the bottom of uh, the boat. You get to put that presentation up and down through multiple levels of the water column, and you really get a chance to really control the descent of a bait like that. This rod is definitely, you know, um, compatible with any of the lures that I showed in my previous lure video, especially, um, especially, you know, 
swim baits. What makes a longer rod like this so great is that it allows you to cast your presentations that much farther than the guy next to you on a busy party boat. Oftentimes, if you're shoulder to shoulder on a busy charter like that, getting your presentations away from the crowd is key. A lot of guys won't fish with anything less than an eight foot rod and a rod like this has great sensitivity and again, a lot of flex and bend and uh, allows you to put that swim bait in multiple, multiple levels of the water column a lot better than the Travala. Also, because of its length, it allows you to target bigger fish than uh, you would with a Travala and gives you that much more leverage when pulling in big fish. It's a great rod to check out if you're considering one rod for all kinds of saltwater, inshore, and deep sea fishing. And so I've covered all the rods and reels that I've ever used in targeting rockfish and link cod. I covered the basics of your reels, as well as why you really only want to use braid. Now, which rod and reel setup is best for you? Well, it's really up to you. Do you want to fish from small craft exclusively? Well, I've covered what reels and rods might work for you. Do you want to only, you know, fish party boats and target the really big stuff in really deep water far offshore? Well, I've covered the gear that's going to work for you. Anything from the six foot speed jigging setup to the light tackle bass setup to the utility of an eight foot Terramar with a, you know, cool bait caster that has the line clicker option, super, super versatile and keep this in mind with all the gear I've shown today yes you can get as fancy as possible but when it comes down to it a lot of times it just comes down to pure luck the biggest link cod I've ever landed was off the coast of Northern California with a cheap $10 novelty pen rod that's right with this setup that I borrowed from a friend I caught a 16 pound link cod my PB ground fish that I've ever caught to date and uh, was able to pull them up and fight them to the surface with a little setup like this. So when it comes down to it, sometimes it just comes down to dumb luck, but you know, there is skill required in getting that boat landed. I'll give myself a little pat in the back, but in a general day-to-day -day sense, you're going to want to look at the versatility and all the advantages of all the gear I've shown today. So as always, thanks again for watching. If you have any information that you'd like to add to help educate myself and all the viewers watching this video, please feel free to leave it as a comment below. And if you're interested in any of the gear, I've shown today. It's available in the description as an affiliate link. Any purchases made through those links directly support content like this. And I do have an Amazon storefront with all the gear you've shown today, plus anything I have ever reviewed with a short synopsis describing what I like and don't like about that product. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you guys on the water.